Good morning, Hope's House. Thank you for joining us this week. Here are your weekly announcements. Join Hope's House women to see The Woman King starring Viola Davis September 17th. But it doesn't stop there. You are also invited to fellowship and join the conversation about the movie over lunch. The day will be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the AMC in Porter Ranch. For more information, please register via the Church Center app. Calling all men of the house. Join us for an orientation and usher training Saturday, September 24th at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. If you are a current usher or if you have an interest in becoming an usher, you are encouraged to attend. You can see one of the lead ushers for more information. Hey family, Sunday, September 25th, Hype Teens is hosting a family night out. Join us as we support one of our youth leaders, Stanley Jackson, in the hit play Animal Farm. Spots are limited, so if you're interested, please reach out to bderusso at hopeshouse.com. We heard you guys loud and clear. Parents' Night Out is back October 1st from 6.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. If you need a break from the kiddos or you're interested in volunteering, please fill out the interest form via the Church Center app. Can't wait for the party. Calling all parents of high school students. There will be an open house slash get to know event for you given by the team. Here you get a chance to meet our leaders and hear what we have in store for the school year. The meeting will follow immediately after service October 2nd and will be held upstairs in the office area across from the teen room. Can't wait to see you all there. Hype Teens is going to Hume Lake for a three day winter retreat, February 3rd to February 5th. Join us for new experiences, new friendships, and a powerful encounter with God. $50 hold your spot, $250 before November 27th, and after that, $300 up until January 15th, 2023. If interested, please fill out the form via the Church Center app or email Ms. B. We're super excited. Good morning, Hope's House. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is worthy to be praised. This is another day that he's blessed us with new mercy. He's blessed us to see with new grace. God is amazing. Can we give God praise this morning before we sing a song, before any note comes out of our mouths? Can we just say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I appreciate you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for an opportunity to come into your house one more time. This is not something we take for granted. We want to acknowledge you. You are great. You are mighty. You are strong. You are powerful. And we want to take time out to acknowledge that, God, you are so good. God, you are everything we need and more. Is God your everything? I don't know about you, but I've needed him to be a doctor. I've needed him to be a lawyer. I've needed him to be a mother. I've needed him to be a father. I've needed him to be shelter. I've needed him to be a provider. And he's shown up every time. So whatever it is that you need God to be, even if you don't feel like you need him to be anything, just trust that he is that and more. He is the air that we breathe. He is the life that we live. Thank you, God. You are everything. And we're so grateful. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are everything, Lord.
There's nothing too hard for our God. He is so powerful. He is so amazing. I don't care what it is that you're facing. I don't care any, whatever it is that you're going through. God can fill the void. Whatever it is that you need him to be. I don't care how insurmountable it seems. He said, he introduced himself to Moses as I am. Whatever you need, he said, I am. Not I will be, not I was, but I am now. Sometimes we forget who God is. And we come and go through the motions and lift our hands and say, yeah, God, you're my everything. But what does it look like to say, God, you are Lord and you're my everything right now. You are the I am. You are strength when I, am, when I have none. You are faith when I have none. Thank you for being the great I am. So as we sing this next song, I encourage you to think about where you can invite God to be who he said he'd be in your life. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I have everything I need. Yes, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. The great I am provides for me. The great I am provides for me.
That's your testimony. Come on and lift him up. Come on and lift him up. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be glorified. God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we magnify your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift them up in your heavenly language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just real quick. Give him really great praise. Come on, put your hands together and give him a really great praise. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus it is of your it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed great is your faithfulness to us and we just want to say thank you God everything we're doing in this building is about you and who you are to us Lord worship is our expression of adoration to you and what you've done we acknowledge you God we acknowledge you Worship is not music, it's our expression of gratitude to who, to you for who you've been to us, God. We just take a moment as a body to acknowledge you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, we have needed your hand has provided great is the faithfulness great Summer and winter 
I want to highlight something that was said this morning in prayer. Our own Donovan, he said, have you ever, God spoke this to him. He said, have you ever recognized yourself as an answered prayer? And I thought about that. And in order for me to be an answered prayer, God has to be faithful in me. He has to be, I have to have a relationship with him. He has to be Lord of my life. And so when I think about how good God is and how he's blessed me and how he's kept me and how he's made a way for me over and 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 over again I can't help but lift up my voice I can't help but lift up my hands I can't help but give him glory even when I don't feel like it because he's Lord because he's God and I thank him and I thank him for who he is and I thank him for who he is. And I thank him for who he is. And we just have to thank him for who he is in our life. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. not going to lie. I don't really care about these announcements right now. I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. Can't even get this to work. <laughs> mm. If I could sing, I would say, great is thy faithfulness. 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 Is thy faithfulness. Come on. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is
for all you've done for me. Yeah! Sometimes you just gotta say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for pressing my body. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life today. Come on and worship him. Worship him like you love him. Come on and give him the glory that's to his name. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the one who started you, the one who will end you, but the one who is everything in between. Come on and lift him up. Lift him up. Acknowledge him and he will direct our path. The choir is coming to sing the song that simply says, We will be satisfied in the Lord. No matter where you are in your life, as long as you stay still and believe and trust that he will direct our path and keep us straight, all we have to do is be satisfied. So wherever he tells us to go, we will go. Wherever he leads us, we will follow because we trust and believe and already know we have the victory. Give God praise and worship right now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to say one thing. My God, my God. I am satisfied. I'm so satisfied. I'm supposed to be dead a long time ago. But God gave me mercy. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. some praise. Yeah. 
God, if you love the Lord, lift your hands and tell him, I'll be satisfied with you. Hey, if you know that he's done a good thing, you may not have what you want. You may not be where you want to be. But I tell you, if you find a satisfaction right there, God will increase you. And he will increase your territory. Come on, give him a praise. Like you're already there. If that expected thing. already reached the promise that he gave to you and tell yourself I will, I will be. this is your hour to worship come on sing I will, I will be. Oh, come on, worship him. Worship the great I am. Tell him that you love him this morning. Tell him you're grateful for his faithfulness over your life. Hallelujah. Now, can I ask this of you? Can I ask this of you? Honestly, because we're about to get into this thing where we're about to receive his word. Can you stand to your feet? Come on. Wherever you Come on, get, you, get that in your spirit. I will be. I hear you. Wherever you, whatever you tell me, I will be. Hey, wherever you lead, I will. I hear you. Satisfied with you. Whatever you tell me, Lord. Hey, I hear you. I this word that's coming forth, wherever you lead. Come on, say, ah, yeah. You may not understand the fullness of the word, but whatever he tells you, come on, say, ah. Come on, get yourself ready for the word. Wherever you lead, tell yourself, ah. Come on, I hear you, but let God hear you. Wherever you go. Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, because it's all for his glory and it's all for his purpose. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Let's thank God for who he is in our lives. Come on, let's lift him up higher as we get ready to receive this word. Let's lift God higher as we get ready to delve into what he wants us to do, where he wants us to go, what he wants us to receive. Come on, come on, come on. Come on and tell yourself I will be Listen, I, w I want to talk to y'all about something because I, 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 there, there's, there's, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the words of these songs this morning, but the worship team was talking about God's faithfulness and how faithful is he, he, how faithful he is. Now, now I want you to hear me on this. See, sometimes we go through situations in our life where his faithfulness is not our preference. Come on, go with me, Jay Black. His, his faithfulness is not our, our preference. So sometimes what God wills to do is not what we want him to do. And, and, and I feel in, in pockets in the sanctuary today some heaviness. Heaviness because you're not satisfied with what's been going on in your life. Listen, no, no beat, no beat, no beat. We're going, we going to praise right now. And God is saying, if you will push past your dissatisfaction with the situation and praise me despite what you're going through, there is healing on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Some of you, some of you, I had a discussion with a young man Friday 
and, and he was telling me that there was, there was some anger that he had with God, and in his anger, he drifted from God. And, and as we were talking, I, I told him, I said, man, don't, don't, don't do that because God can handle your anger. Watch this. With him. Oh, yeah, y'all getting quiet now. He says, when you're going through whatever it is that you're going through, he is God enough to deal with your anger even when you're angry with him. Some of you are angry with God right now. You haven't even expressed it, and that's why you can't be healed. But he set this thing up specifically for you. He set this thing up this morning specifically for you to talk about his faithfulness and then to talk about being satisfied with him. Paul said, I have learned to be content no matter what the circumstance. Paul had been in jail. He had been beat down. He was on his way to being killed. Paul understood that he said, I can still be content because I understand the end. I already know what's going to happen in the end. It is the glory that God is going to get from my life. Listen, I know that the present suffering seem like a lot, but they are nothing compared to the glory that God is going to get out of your life. So my suggestion to you is this. Say this with me. Give it to God. What does that look like, P-Ray? It looks like praising him despite what it is that you're going. Because see, a lot of times, immature believers that don't know any better praise God when things are going well. And then when things are not going well, we do like the prophet and we go hide in a cave. But God is saying, if you would come out of the cave this morning and worship me for who I am and not for your situation, if you would dare to believe beyond what it is that you're going through and give me praise anyway, I promise you, I may not change the situation, but I'll change you in the situation. It may not change immediately the way you want it to, but I promise you, I'll make a change in you. So this is what we're going to do before we get into this word today. I said it before. We've done it before. But when the children of Israel were watch, marching around those walls, God gave them a command at the very end, after that seventh day, to shout, and the walls came coming down. Why did the walls come coming down? Because they shouted so loudly. You ever shouted loud enough to even make a wall tremble? The reason that it happened was because they were obedient in what God had called them to do. It was their obedience in, in letting out a noise that God commanded them to do that caused shifting in the, in, the, in the earth. The shifting in the earth is what caused the walls to come down. Can I suggest to you that there are some walls around your heart this morning and if you would give him praise and shout with victory, those walls would start to crumble down so God can get to your heart and heal you. Do I have a testimony in here of anybody who's ever been healed in your heart? Yeah, come on. So on the count of three, this is what I want you to do. I want you to speak well of him. I don't care what it is that you're going through. The enemy is going to try to stop you from doing this. But I just want you to praise him. Speak well of him. Lord, I thank you. There is nobody like you. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. You are my healer. You are my protector. You are my provider. Come on, go right now and give him praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you're my protector. Even when I'm not satisfied with my current situation, you are greater than my circumstance. Even in sadness, I will worship you. Come on, come on, come on. Even though I'm feeling discouragement, I will lift up a praise. Make sure you keep the church. I will lift up a praise. Because you have been faithful to me. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. I will bless the 
Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, praise him despite what you're going through. Somebody else needs to hear your praise.
sentence this morning. He said, I set this whole table for you. I set this whole table for you. Even your disappointment in yourself. He says, listen, I have let it go. You got to let you go. I'm talking to somebody this morning. That grief that is balled up in your chest, that seems like you can't even pass it. It's just, it's just sitting there like a knot. He says, I'm here to start the process of your healing. Some of you can't help can't even live past mistakes you made decades ago and you still think God is punishing you can I tell you he's not punishing you you got to stop punishing yourself the worry the grief the misunderstandings he says no matter what it is that you've been through I'm here I'm here I don't care if you're here at the altar or they're sitting in your seat. I want you to bow your head and speak to God. What is it that you came for today? Why did you come here today? What were you looking for? What were you looking for? Were you looking for relief? Were you looking for peace? Were you looking for healing? I'm telling you, it's all here in the room right now. Whether you are here or online, he is where you are. We serve an I'm not present God, which means he's everywhere at the same time. While he's holding us down here, he can hold you wherever you are. Speak to him. I want to give you some understanding of what this is. Please hear me. I, I was going to talk today. We were starting the series, Why? And I was going to talk to you about Jesus. But Jesus decided it was better. God decided it was wiser to just do a demonstration of how the Spirit of God can move with with, without your permission how he can interrupt our plans and comes after us with relentless pursuit where are you today what have you not given to him as a husband and wife as a single person as a friend what is it that you're dealing with as a son or a daughter he says I'm here to walk with you through this journey Somebody said that's good, P. Ray, but I, I can't leave out of here without a scripture. I was going to preach from John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life. He didn't come to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved from what? Not just for salvation, but saved from yourself. Saved from the pain. You can be healed. You can be delivered and set free. I was going to talk about how the entire Old Testament, after the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, how God said, I miss you. Even though Adam and Eve could no longer be in the garden because of their own disobedience, God went on a relentless pursuit through the entire Old Testament to reconcile them back to Him. Do I have some people in the house that know that God is not just the God of second chances, but He's the God of many chances? Come on, if you've ever needed more than two shots from God, two opportunities from God, can you make some noise in this building today? Time after time after time, God would deliver his people. They would, they would praise him for the deliverance and then something would occur in, in, in their lives and then they'd go back to sin 
over and over again. And you know what God did? He kept going after him over and over again. He literally would not stop. You ask the question, why Jesus? Can I tell you that what Jesus represents is God's relentless pursuit of us? What Jesus represents as the Savior, it, it is God saying, I don't care what you've done, there is a promise and there is provision. I'm talking to somebody today. You want to know if Jesus is real? I guarantee you, you can feel him right now. You want to know if the Holy Spirit is real? I guarantee you, you can feel him right now because he's in this room. What is it that you need from Jesus? What is it that you need from the Savior today? He's here for whatever it is that you need. He can handle the situation. All you've got to do is give it over to Him. Release it to Him. We're going to take one more moment and then I'm going to invite those who are at the altar to go back to their seats and we're going to round this thing out. But I want to give you all, wherever you are in the building, whether you are here at the altar or not, I want to give you the opportunity to speak to God and to tell Him what it is that you're giving to Him. Is it in your head? Put your hand on your head. Is it in your heart? Put your hand on your heart. Whatever it is that you're giving back to Him, is it disappointment? Is it anger? Is it confusion? He says, I'll give you peace if you give me that confusion. Come on, as the musicians play, just to give you some background music. I want you to speak to God in your own way. What is it that you're giving to God? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Speak to Him. Speak to Him. God, here's my heart. My heart has been broken. But God, I trust you to heal me. God, here is my, my mind. I feel like I'm going crazy, but I know that you are my peace. You are my sustainer. God, heal my mind. Not your will, not my will, but yours be done. Come on, speak to him. He says, I set this table for you. That depression, give it to him. Even the thoughts that it might be better to end your life, Give that to him today. He's here to heal you. Is it your child? Give your child over to God. He's got him. He's a protector. He's a protector. God, we give it to you today. Our children, our marriages, our lives, our sin, we give it to you today. You died on the cross for us to be free. No more bondage, no more slavery to sin. slavery to sin.
settle some things for you today. To show you the truth of who I am. Some of you have been running from him because you think he can't handle the truth of who you are. He knows exactly who you are and he still chases after you. There's deliverance in this house today. There's a peace beyond understanding in the house today. Who is this Jesus? The one who died on the cross for your sins. The one who bled, who suffered and died. But he didn't stop there. On the third day, God raised him up with all power in his hand. We serve and worship a resurrected Savior. Because he got up, you can get up. You share in the same power that raised him from the dead. What is it that needs to be resurrected in your life? What is it that needs to come back to life? Is it your faith? Is it your trust in God? He says, I've come today to resurrect your faith in me. I know you think I let you down, but I'm coming for you today. I have not let you down. He says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He's coming for you today. to me and said, hey, hey, skip to the end. Because my people today need to know who it is that they serve. Skip to the end. Because they already know about the Old Testament. They've been living it. <laughs> time and time again, God pursuing you and you running the opposite way. God showing his power in your life. You saying, thank you, Jesus. I know you're real. 
And then something happens, the enemy gets into your mind and causes you to drift because of disappointment or because God is taking too long. He says, you ain't got to preach that. Because they've been living it. The children of Israel were waiting for the commandments, the covenant from God. And because Moses was taking too long, they decided to go into some idol worship. Can I tell you that some of you have stopped waiting on God because you feel like he's taking too long. But he's saying, I'm here to prove to you today. I love that, whatever that is. I'm here to prove to you today. Say this with me. Time is not my enemy. That just freed somebody right there. Say it again with me. Time is not my enemy. Because some of you have been waiting on that relationship. You have been waiting on that deliverance. You've been waiting on those finances. And you're saying, God, where are you? And the enemy has gotten into time and told you, you need to do this yourself and, and, and take it into your own hands. And in taking it into your own hands, you have created an Ishmael. Abraham couldn't wait for the promise. So he told, his wife told him, his wife said, babe, why don't you get the maid servant and sleep with her because clearly God ain't going to do it to me. I want to talk to some people this morning who believe, well, I don't think God going to do it through me. I, 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 think, I think I heard it, but, but maybe I was hearing it for somebody else. Can I tell you that God is not done with you? Can I tell you that even though it didn't turn out like you expected, the plans that you had made for 10, 15 years from now, and you feel like what's going on now has just ruined it all, he says, I got healing for you because my plans and my thoughts are beyond your thoughts and your ways. Noah, Noah was part of God's reset. He saw the power of God. And still after the floods, flooding through the entire earth, even after he saw the display of power, he still ended up, the righteous one, getting drunk after he saw the power of God and falling into sin. Moses went up to get the covenant, to get the commandments. And while he was up there, after they had been delivered from the enemy, he said God was taking too long. So they start worshiping somebody else. Then David, God said he was going to establish. Abraham, he was going to establish. And in both cases, there was trickery. There was lying. There was cheating. Because people couldn't wait and go through God's process. And God said, even though you have betrayed me, I'm still going to keep my promise. Even though... You have skipped out on me time and time again. I love you so much, I can't stop chasing after you. I need to talk to some people in here this morning. You have sentenced yourself, and God is saying, I need you to release you from the prison you created. I didn't send my son for you to stay bound by your own stuff. So the whole Old Testament is this cycle of sin and shame and God's deliverance and sin and shame and God's deliverance. Anybody ever been through that kind of cycle in their lives? Come on, let's just tell the truth this morning. But God kept saying in the middle of all that, I'm sending somebody for you. I'm sending him in such a way that you can't reverse what I'm about to send. So who is Jesus? For God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. When he gave his son, he gave humanity a new order for victory. Hear me. Can y'all hear me good? All right. There was the first Adam, and then the fall happened. Jesus sent his son for the second Adam. 
Jesus was the second Adam to reverse the curse of the first. So when he sent Jesus, you ask yourself the question, why? Why Jesus? What is he for? Why was he important? Because he was the second Adam sent to reverse the curse. The first time God formed man from the dust of the earth, and then he blew into him the breath of life. He formed him first, and then blew the spirit into him. It was body first, then spirit, and he became a living soul. The second Adam, he reversed the order. He sent the spirit to then have the body formed around the spirit in the stomach of a virgin. What am I telling you? God sent me to tell you this this morning. You all are going through first Adam processes expecting second Adam results. He says today I need you to commit to spirit first. Say that with me, spirit first. Right, which means God I'm starting with your will. I'm starting with what you want from me. I'm starting with your strategy and what you want and not my will. And then I'll let everything be added unto me. See, a lot of times what we do is we form that thing and then we say, God bless it. We go out chasing Abu and then say, God do it in the name of Jesus. Instead of waiting for the one that God is going to present to you. Y'all working too hard. You're working too hard and you're working wrong. Because each time you do your will and not his, you drift further and further away. And the more you do it your way and listening to the flesh, the harder it is to hear God. Some of you are wondering, why can't I hear God? Because you don't talk to him that much anymore. He says, but even in the way that you've drifted, I still love you so much that I can't help but chase after you. Who is this Jesus? When he gave his son, he gave us the provision and he gave us the promise. In Genesis 3 and 15, when all that stuff happened with the fall, he told Adam and Eve, he said, remember he said the serpent would be bruised, that, that a son would come, that there would be one born who would, who would bruise the head or crush the head of the serpent. And, and the serpent would bruise his heel. He was referring to Jesus. He was referring to the fact that there would be one born that would defeat Satan once and for all. But there would be pain involved. Somebody needs to understand this. You think that because you're going through pain, it doesn't mean healing is on the other side. I've been going through therapy for my shoulder and it's painful. The healing process is painful because I got to stretch out these ligaments that have now, uh, I don't even know what the word is to me. They did something, but they tight. <laughs> and, and my therapy, my therapy requires me to stretch in ways that are uncomfortable and it hurts. But in that pain, I am confident that I, I continue to do what my therapist has said, that one day I will be completely healed. See, my thing is, I'd rather go through the pain that is required for healing than the pain that comes from stagnation. Jesus had to go through pain for you and I, but he was willing to be slaughtered on the cross because he loved us so much. He said, I'll go through the pain because they're worth it. Jesus was the promise and he was the provision. How did he provide? You guys remember in the, in the Garden of Eden, some of you may remember, some of you may not. In the middle of God speaking to them and sentencing them in their sin, he says to them, who told you you were naked? It's funny because God didn't say, well, stay that way then. Just stay exposed with your disobedient self. See, that's how we process who God is because a lot of times we've had earthly fathers, earthly parents that were like that. So we think God is that way too. But you know what God did? He covered them. Even in their disobedience, God was covering them. Can I tell you that the provision of, of the Garden of Eden was nothing to the, compared to the provision that he provided through Jesus? Because when Jesus came, he took the sin that was draping us, 
that was clothing us, he became sin and gave us a garment of righteousness. That's why the Bible says we are the righteousness of God. Not because we deserved it, not because we earned it, but Jesus said, God, they have to be punished, but instead of them, me. The law of God states God is perfect, he is holy. And because of sin, somebody had to die. He sent his son to die instead of us to take the punishment that we deserved but the only way for him to take the punishment was to become sin even though he had never sinned he was the provision this Jesus is proof that God never gave up on his creation through all the madness of the Old Testament, through all the disobedience, through all the sin, through all the walking away from Him, God never gave up. Can I tell somebody that He's never going to give up on you? Somebody in here has given up on themselves. You made a decision this week to throw it all in. That's, I'm, I'm done. That's it. You here, but you're not really here today. You're, in the, you're sitting down, but you're not really present. But I want to inspire you and encourage you today that you're here because he never gave up on you. He disrupted all of our plans just for you. He altered my sermon. He took the worship and took it to a whole nother place. The choir came in and sung another song that, that cemented what it was that he wanted to say to us today. And that is, find in me watch this and I will give you a peace beyond understanding in a way that allows you to be satisfied not because you like what it is that you're dealing with but your satisfaction with my presence overshadows any pain that you're going through in your current situation he says, if you would learn to be satisfied with my presence, that's why that song came up today. Great is thy faithfulness to remind us how faithful God has been to us. Has God been faithful to anybody in the house today? Come on, can you give him praise for being faithful to you today? Come on, can you praise him like you know he's been faithful to you? Through danger seen and unseen, God, you've been faithful to me. Even with the mistakes I chose to make. You are still faithful to me. Come on, bow your heads. God, we thank you. We thank you for this moment. Whew. Thank you. Because you do all things well don't make mistakes you didn't make a mistake with us yeah we frustrate you sometimes we we've gone the opposite way of what you intended but you gave us Jesus for coverage for past sins for present sin and yeah for future sin God thank you for covering us today Thank you for your patience with us, God. Thank you for your patience with us, God. Thank you for never giving up on us, God. Ah. Even in our pride, our willingness to willingly go the opposite way of where you called us, you still chase after us. The calling on our lives. The freedom and righteousness that you offer us through your son, Jesus Christ, we accept it today. We free ourselves from the man-made prison we put ourselves in. God, we thank you for forgiveness today. We thank you for forgiving us today. We thank you. We open up ourselves to you. We make ourselves available to you. Yeah. We empty ourselves of our pride. 
we empty ourselves of even our anger and lay it at the feet of the cross. Even our, our confusion with the season that we're in and asking you, God, why? Why me, God? And he's saying, let me, let me work this out. Walk this with me. Take the journey with me. I promise you, I won't let you down. God, give us, give us spiritual discipline today. Not to stray from the strategy. Not to stray from what you've given us. Not to stray from your love. Not to drift because of disappointment, God. But to put that disappointment and that discouragement at the foot of the cross. Uh, to, to not look at time anymore as our enemy. But to understand that we'll wait through it instead of waiting on it. We'll take the journey with you and watch you do the miraculous. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If there is anyone in the house today that you know you have not received Jesus as your Savior, I just want you to raise your hand in the building. You know that you want victory in your life. You have not received him. And so today you want to make the decision through your faith to allow Jesus into your heart. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Maybe you have been the person that we've talked about, that you know you've drifted from God in your relationship. You've drifted from Jesus because of disappointment. You've drifted because of discouragement, because it hasn't happened yet. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. There's so much that has been done already. Conclusions that have been made already. To renew walks with God. <laughs> God said in the first altar call, there were those who were kneeling at the altar with tears streaming down. I said, God, I will trust you again. What is that verse, Keisha? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He's saying, if you trust me, I'll direct you. If you trust me, I'll show you the path. You don't have to be stressed and full of anxiety because you don't know the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. some of you, your anxiety is based on your decision to try to think your way through something God has designed you to trust your way through. He says, I got you and your kids. You and your spouse. You and your job and your boss. I got all of it. You and your friends. You and your mind. You and your heart. You and your disappointment. I got it all in the palm of my hand. Because I love you that much. I will never stop pursuing you. I will never stop loving you. Because I'm God. I am the embodiment of love. Maybe somebody needs the Holy Spirit today. The spirit that Jesus left us with want to know more about this Holy Spirit if that's you I invite you to come forward maybe you are somebody who wants to join Hope's house this morning I promise you it's the second best decision you make next to salvation to be in a church that loves God and loves you if that's you I invite you to come forward my sister Lynn my sister Nikki will receive you if you want to join this community of believers today. And maybe you may make the decision after church, make sure that you look at their faces and see their faces well. And they will give you the steps on how. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are online listening to us, 
at home, in your car, wherever you are. If you need prayer, there are prayer counselors on the line right now waiting to speak and pray with you. You can also join Host House online. All you got to do is type in the chat and let us know that you want to be a part of this great community. God bless you, my sister, and welcome to the family. Everybody look up at me, please. This has been a very unique offering. And I don't mean offering as in giving. We're about to do that. But what God has done today has been very unique in his presence. Are you thankful for his presence? How many of you are thankful for him meeting you at your very point of need this morning? I want to tell you all that we are going to move now into the time for worship and giving. Come on, let's put our hands together. Like I said, we had plans today to show you the 120 campaign video, and it was going to be nice and sweet, and you know. And God said, nah. But I want to tell you that this is an opportunity to worship God in giving to invest in the kingdom. Do you know what a privilege it is to invest in God's plan? To invest in God's way and what he wants to do? You get an opportunity to do that today. We want to thank all of you who are giving in your tithes and your offerings. I want to invite you today to sow into the spirit of God that was on display today. Let him speak to you even in the way that you give today. Because trust me, this is ground that is fertile. This is ground that, that will allow us to see a bountiful harvest, a great harvest. And we want you to be a part of it. This is your opportunity to worship him. Y'all remember I said a couple weeks ago, even when we worship in giving through our tithes and offerings, it is a way for us to say thank you to God. Thank you for how you blessed us. Thank you for how you blessed us with income. And so, God, we give back to you just to say thank you. You have four ways to give. You can text any amount to 84321. Download the Church Center app. You can give online at hopeshouse.com. And for those of you who want to give in person, there are ushers who are walking the aisles right now who will give you an envelope. You can write a check to Hope's House or cash, however you want to bless God today in your giving. Don't forget, we are in our 120 campaign. God is continuing to do great things in the house. It is our aim and what God has given us to raise $150,000 by the end of the year. And I believe that we're going to do it. Amen. I said, I believe that we're going to do it. Amen. Why? Why? Because the plans that we have for that investment go to our children it goes to continuing to beautify the church. You all know, God knows, we need air conditioners. All of that is part of the plan for us to continue uh, to build the kingdom through Hope's House and reach the community and the world. So when you give, know that this is an intentional time of giving to expand the kingdom and to continue to give into the vision. Amen. Amen. Everybody got envelopes. Everybody got what they need. Amen. If you can raise your giving device or your envelope, I'm going to pray over the offering. God, we thank you. We thank you so much for being God. Thank you for how you have blessed our households from single to married to family to single parents. God, thank you how you blessed us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for how you've provided and in response to the way that you provide it, it is a privilege for us to give today. We are cheerful givers today in our tithing and our offering and even in our pledges for this 120 campaign as we advance the kingdom. We thank you for the vision that you've given Pastor Chuck, that you've given Pastor Dre, and how we take part in spreading this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. God, we are inspired today. We know even more now why Jesus had to come. And so today we give in response to the joy that we have access to through our faith in him. Lord, bless us. Bless our households. Download strategies and business plans. Give us increased income where there is a need. 
so that we can be blessed to be a blessing 30, 60, 100 fold that men would give unto our bosoms God help us to continue and understand that in our giving we open ourselves up to the overflow thank you for the overflow that you have given us access to and hearts of generosity in the mighty name of Jesus we pray thank God amen come on can you put your hands together today for the opportunity and privilege to invest in the kingdom amen amen all right today is baptism come on and so this gives us an opportunity this gives us an opportunity to now see the embodiment the symbol symbolism of what it means to, to go down with Jesus and then to be resurrected in the spirit. Amen. And so today somebody is going to go through this journey of baptism. And I'm so glad that all of you are here to, to witness this and to understand and be reminded that because of Jesus, we have access to eternal life. And so Pastor Chuck is going to come up in just a minute to walk us through this process with the one who today has come to be baptized. I want to remind you all that after church, you can still sign up for connect groups. Don't forget, we still have, this week was our introduction week. We start actual discussions this week coming up. So please, if you still want to sign up for a connect group, you have the opportunity. They will be outside in the lobby today signing you up for those of you who haven't had a chance to sign up yet. Also, there is a connect group going on today. I have half of a voice, but I will be running that connect group uh, today. Um, so y'all just come close. We'll meet up here in the front for our connect group at the end of the service today. Amen. All right, Pastor Chuck, if you can come on up and lead us. Hallelujah. Can we give God a hand for what God did in the house today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Ray, for being a yielded vessel. Man, oh man, listen, I, I, how many folks are blessed by just having a chance to tell God, to receive from God today? Also, let me ask you this one question before we transition. How many folks know someone that you, you're saying, I wish so-and-so was here for this? Amen. You have a friend, a family member who has been struggling and you know they need the touch of the Holy Spirit. This is why we invite folks to church. Come on, why Jesus? This is why we invite folks to church because we want them to be in an atmosphere where they can be touched by God in a special way. Amen? So make sure to invite somebody to come out because God is always doing something in the house. Amen? Praise God. So baptism, listen, how many folks have been baptized? Went to the water, praise God. Well, we have some folks who are being baptized today. And just to give you a sense of what it's about, because we want to reflect outwardly what God has done inwardly. Amen. And one of the things that happens with baptism is not the washing of the, of a, the skin and washing off the of dirt, but it's really a symbol of the cleansing of the soul. Amen. Beyond that, as the person goes down in the water, it's a representation of being buried with Christ. Amen. And being what? raised up in newness of life. Amen? Y'all good, good with that? That's, that's resurrection power right there. A demonstration of resurrection power. And we have two candidates, I believe. One is, is this Ni Myla Jones? Is that Myla? Which one? Myla? Hi, Myla. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? She's so excited. Like, what is going on over here? We are so excited to share this experience with you. Amen? Are we excited for her? Amen. Hallelujah. So listen, all these folks are supporting you. We're for you. We got your back. We are praying with you and praying for you in this moment. Amen. So I want to ask you this question. You want to tell them all how you feel, okay? Have you accepted Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died and was buried and raised up on the third day just for you? Amen. As a result of the public proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ, we hereby baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes. Praise the Lord. Man, the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Praise God for young people making the decision for Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Is this Nyland, Nyland Jones? Hey, Nyland. How you doing? 
<laughs> What's up? Listen, we, we support you. We honor your decision today to acknowledge Jesus Christ publicly. We want to support you, keep praying for you. And we're going to ask you this question before you go down. Have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again on the third day for your, for your salvation? Yeah. Amen. So by the, as a result of the public proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ, we hereby baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for lives changed and transformed for Jesus Christ. We want to smell the blood, huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless God. You can stand your feet. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Y'all got the communion song. <laughs> it's power. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. The blood of Jesus Christ covers these young people, Lord God. For all hurt, harm, and danger, they shall fulfill their God-ordained purpose in Jesus Christ's name. They shall be a witness of the goodness of God in their schools, in their homes, in their neighborhoods, in communities, wherever they go, Lord God. Wherever you're calling them to, Lord God, the residue of Jesus Christ, the presence of God will rest upon their lives in Jesus Christ's name. We cover them. We ask that you protect them and keep them in Jesus' name. Fulfill your purpose in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, 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 amen. Well, listen, it's been a, 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 a quite a Hope's House Sunday. Praise God. I want to, on, on behalf of Pastor Dre, who's actually preaching in Oxnard right now, thank you all for, first of all, thank you all for being here today. It makes a difference when you're in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. And... Thank you for coming last week to our anniversary celebration and Soul Food Sunday. How many folks still got some soul food right about here? Got some soul food on your hips? Praise God. It was a wonderful time. Uh, listen, Hope's House is not Hope's House without you. You bring the very presence of God with you, and God is blessed by your presence, and people sense God because of your presence. I don't want you to underestimate the fact that us being together in the house of God allows moments like we had today to happen. Amen. So on behalf of Pastor Ray, the whole Hope's House leadership team, thank you, choir. Amen. Let's give it up for the choir. Thank you. Thank you, band. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, man. I'm watching you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Nicole, and the praise team. Listen, listen, she took us back to old school church, and we needed that so bad, amen? Amen. Anything else, Pastor Ray? Any announcements? So meet Pastor Ray, the Connect Group folks. Meet Pastor Ray after church. Listen, make sure you love on somebody, bless somebody, encourage somebody today to continue to walk in the way that God has ministered to you today in Jesus' name. God is relentlessly chasing you down because he loves you so much. Why, Jesus? Why, Jesus? Because of you. Amen? Because of you. Tell somebody, why, Jesus? Because of you. Because of you. Amen? Let's pray. Close out. Let's have a great day in Jesus. Father, we thank you and praise you for your faithfulness to us, for your everlasting love, for your relentless pursuit of us, Lord God, the, the, the never-ending love of God that pursues us day by day. Thank you for new mercies every morning. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. And great is your faithfulness, Lord God. God, we thank you for what you did today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for having your way. Thank you for using yielded vessels to bring about your plan and purpose. God, we thank you for restoration in every man and woman and boy and child, girl and child, the child that came down today to the altar. We thank you for a renewed faith, renewed hope, a renewed vision in Jesus Christ's name. For all these things we thank you and say in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. If you're in the Sunday Connect group, you can meet me upstairs at about 1145. Meet me upstairs at 1145 if you're in the Sunday Connect group. God bless y'all. Thank you.
you for joining us this week. Here are your weekly announcements. Join Hope's House Women to see The Woman King starring Viola Davis September 17th. But it doesn't stop there. You are also invited to fellowship and join the conversation about the movie over lunch. The day will be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m at the AMC in Porter Ranch. For more information, please register via the Church Center app. Calling all men of the house. Join us for an orientation and usher training Saturday, September 24th at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. If you are a current usher or if you have an interest in becoming an usher, you are encouraged to attend. You can see one of the lead ushers for more information. Hey family, Sunday, September 25th, Hype Teens is hosting a family night out. Join us as we support one of our youth leaders, Stanley Jackson, in the hit play Animal Farm. Spots are limited, so if you're interested, please reach out to bderusso at hopeshouse.com. We heard you guys loud and clear. Parents' Night Out is back October 1st from 6.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. If you need a break from the kiddos or you're interested in volunteering, please fill out the interest form via the Church Center app. Can't wait for the party. Calling all parents of high school students. There will be an open house slash get to know event for you given by the team. Here you get a chance to meet our leaders and hear what we have in store for the school year. The meeting will follow immediately after service October 2nd and will be held upstairs in the office area across from the teen room. Can't wait to see you all there. Hype Teens is going to Hume Lake for a three day winter retreat, February 3rd to February 5th. Join us for new experiences, new friendships, and a powerful encounter with God. $50 holds your spot, $250 before November 27th, and after that, $300 up until January 15th, 2023. If interested, please fill out the form via the Church Center app or email Ms. B. We're super excited. 